I'm David Hansen, a member of Halifax Civic Trust for the last 40 years. I'm about to embark on a high-speed virtual walk-come flight among some of the best buildings in our remarkable town. Here goes. Our first photo shows a cluster of heritage developments that have put Halifax on the tourist and cultural map in recent years. Those of you who have visited the Georgian Peace Hall since its £19 million restoration will recognise the giant quadrangle at the heart of the picture. In front, facing Square Road, are, from the left, the red brick Georgian Square Chapel, the adjacent Victorian spire of Square Church, the modern Central Library, and finally the former mill or warehouse that is the home of the Calderdale Industrial Museum. Our next slide is an aerial shot of a similar area taken in the 1980s. This is how the Peace Hall looked following its first restoration and reopening in 1976, with its market stalls, grassy spaces and performance stage. Square Chapel and the spire of Square Church are near the far corner of the Peace Hall, but there's a gap where the new library is now. The four flat grey roofs to the right of the picture form the Pennine Shopping Centre, now largely empty and awaiting redevelopment. The triangular building beyond is India Buildings of 1861, Halifax's finest Victorian warehouse, once a wool warehouse and later occupied by a firm of cigar manufacturers and latterly a furniture shop. There are plans to turn it into apartments. But back to Square Chapel and Square Church. But back to Square Chapel and Square Church. The chapel was opened by the Congregationalists in 1772 and is one of Halifax's few Georgian brick buildings. The church thrived, and by the middle of the 19th century more space was needed, and so a new church was built next door. Square Church, with its 235-foot spire, the second tallest in Halifax, and the third in West Yorkshire after Wakefield Cathedral, opened in 1857. The chapel building became the Sunday School. But decline set in after the Second World War in what was then a very run-down part of the town, and the church closed in 1969. In the early 1970s, a number of fires in the Victorian church led to most of it being demolished. But the Spire and Sunday School were both listed, and there followed two decades in which Halifax Civic Trust and others fought to save the old chapel, while others, who claimed the building was in danger of collapsing, fought to have it pulled down. Dozens of possible uses for the building, from housing to offices, museum to visitor centre, old folks' home to conference centre, were suggested, and all failed until in 1988 a group of friends formed a trust, bought the building for £25, and set about restoring it and turning it into an art centre. First performance was given a year later, and the centre thrived with an esoteric mixture of music, film, theatre, comedy and family shows. From the start, the Square Chapel Trust planned to extend the premises, but achieving that goal took almost 30 years, until 2017, when a magnificent new building attached to the rear of the old chapel was opened. This triangular extension, with its tree-like columns and coffered ceiling painted in shades of autumn, contains a cafe, meeting rooms, booking office and toilets, with, alongside, a second copper-clad auditorium with 110 seats, much used for showing films. The new extension was an instant success and we were delighted to give it a Halifax Civic Trust Award in 2018. Sadly, thanks to a combination of financial pressures and the coronavirus, the Arts Centre was forced to close in March 2020, but we've just heard that the Wigan-based arts and heritage group Arts at the Mill is taking over at Square, hopefully to continue the good work of the previous 30 years. The demolition of most of the adjacent Square Church in the 1970s left a gap on Square Road, and it was here that Calderdale Council decided to build a new central library. It was a controversial scheme, as many people wanted the library to remain in its more central and convenient location in Northcote, where it had been since 1983. A campaign group called Don't Bulldoze Our Library was formed to fight the plan. Despite a petition with 16,000 signatures, the council decided to go ahead with a nine and a quarter million pound scheme, and whatever our reservations about the location, we had to agree that architecturally the design was a masterstroke. The new building, largely clad in an unusual buff-coloured handmade brick, is undoubtedly modern, yet sits comfortably with its, its, its historic neighbours. Inside there are four bright, airy, attractive floors. In addition, the design incorporates the 235-foot listed Victorian spire and the nearby rose window, making the most of these historic remains and the scheme included a new entrance to the Peace Hall, creating a new pedestrian route from the rail station, Eureka, and the library to the town centre. 
Library opened in September 2017 and we gave the scheme a Halifax Civic Trust Award in 2019. 2017 turned out to be a big year for Halifax. Apart from the opening of the library and the Square Chapel extension, it saw the reopening of the Calderdale Industrial Museum. The museum had been opened by Calderdale Council in 1985 in the former Albion Works, later renamed Central Works, which had been used by many different firms from its opening in around 1889. The museum's collection with artefacts from local firms ranging from textiles to machine tools, confectionery and engine manufacturers, among many others, recalled Halifax's reputation as the town of a hundred trades. The museum closed in 2000 because of council spending cuts, but by the 2010s a group of enthusiasts, Calderdale Industrial Museum Association, had been formed with the aim of reopening it. In 2016 the council handed over the keys to the group and after a period of restoration backed with local authority and other grants, the museum opened in 2017 on the same day as the adjacent library. Let's leave Square, uh, Square Road and head for the Peace Hall, the multi-award winning jewel in the crown of Halifax's heritage. Let's leave Square Road and head for the Peace Hall, the multi-award winning jewel in the crown of Halifax's heritage. This aerial view was taken in 1972, just four years before the hall underwent its first great restoration. For nearly a hundred years the Peace Hall had been used as a wholesale fish, fruit and vegetable market and the three chalet-like buildings and the other lean-to structures all around the perimeter were used by the traders. The ruins of Square Church, which had suffered its worst fire a year before, are visible at the bottom right of the photo. The Peace Hall opened on January the 1st, 1779, as a market for selling pieces of cloth, typically 30 yards long, made on hand looms in local homes throughout the district. It cost around £10,000, and its 315 traders' rooms were arranged on two and three storeys, allowing for the slope of the site. Amazingly, the hall was only open on Saturdays, and only for two hours, between 10am and noon, and there were fines for anyone who traded outside these hours. But the Peace Hall's days as a cloth market were soon numbered. With the Industrial Revolution, yarn and cloth production moved from workers' cottages to the new textile mills, and with them the need for centralised markets declined. The Peace Hall's vast courtyard came to be used for a wide range of events, from political rallies to the town's first balloon ascent in 1824. Queen Victoria's coronation was celebrated here in 1838, and in 1863 some 16,000 people welcomed the Prince of Wales when he came to open Halifax's new town hall. In 1861 the French tightrope walker Charles Blondin crossed the hall on a high wire. Yorkshire's first brass band contest was held here, and from 1838 to 1890 Sings by massed choirs of Sunday school pupils drew thousands to the hall. In 1868, the building was taken over by Halifax Corporation, which turned it into a wholesale market for fish, fruit, and vegetables. In 1868, the building was taken over by Halifax Corporation, which turned it into a wholesale market for fish, fruit, and vegetables. And so it remained until the 1970s, when the traders moved out and Calderdale Council embarked on a major restoration that turned the 200 year old hall into a visitor attraction with new shops, markets, an art gallery, museum, tourist information centre. Thousands came to celebrate at the opening in July 1976, as you can see from this shot of performing gymnasts, which also provides a close-up of the hall's three levels. From the top they are the colonnade, the rustic and the arcade. But decades on, the Peace Hall was looking tired and shabby. The markets had gone and the shops were struggling. Again, Calderdale Council set out on a major £19 million overhaul, repairing the fabric, installing new services, opening up new entrance on the east side and a link to the Square Chapel on the south, inviting new shops and eateries and building a new four-storey income earning extension just outside the hall. Three new heritage spaces were created, the Peace Hall Story, the Map Room and the Traders Room to bring the history of the Peace Hall to life. Visually, the main change was in the courtyard which was resurfaced in granite and other stones, primarily to create a large level surface for performances, of which there have been many. When the Peace Hall opened on August the 1st, 2017, Yorkshire Day, 23,000 people turned out to see the Grade 1 listed hall, which has been described as the most important building in Yorkshire after York Minster. The renovation has won multiple awards, including a Civic Voice Design Award, nominated by Halifax Civic Trust, 
plus a Halifax Civic Trust Award in 2018 and an International Lighting Design Award. At night, the courtyard, with its inset lighting overlooked by a floodlit square church spire, is stunning. Let's return briefly to the aerial photo of the Peace Hall in 1972. The area at the top of the picture was named Square and contained a number of Georgian townhouses. The buildings at the top left included Halifax's abattoir. The street at the very top of the picture is wool shops, where wool traders or staplers used to sell wool by weight rather than by the bale. In 1972, much of the area was a temporary car park awaiting redevelopment. But this was also the scene of Halifax Civic Trust's greatest triumph. For in the 1970s, we fought a plan for a huge £30 million Arndale shopping centre here. This development, with two connected malls in the form of a giant letter H, would have been more than three times the size of the Peace Hall. It would have increased the town's retail space by 50% at a stroke, putting at risk the rest of the town centre, and it would have destroyed wool shops, including several listed buildings and important views from the town centre. Halifax Civic Trust, by, backed by the National Civic Trust, the Georgian Group, the Victorian Society, the Ancient Monument Society and the Society for the Protection of Ancient Buildings, hired a barrister to fight the scheme at a public inquiry in 1978. The following year, Environment Secretary Michael Heseltine refused permission to demolish the listed buildings, which effectively killed the Arndale scheme. Instead, a much smaller, human-scale and sympathetic retail development took place, with new shops, Market Street, and wool shops later extended south towards the Peace Hall in a new street recalling the square name. Let's quickly dash through more of the town centre showing some other uh, architectural highlights. This is a very mucky looking Halifax Town Hall in 1971 after more than a century of industrial grime. The architect was Sir Charles Barry of Houses of Parliament fame. Barry died during the construction of the Town Hall which was finished by his son Edward Middleton Barry. The Italianate Town Hall, which contained almost all the departments of Halifax Corporation, including the police, was opened by the Prince of Wales, later King Edward VII, in August 1863. And here is the Grade 2 listed, Grade two Star listed Town Hall, three years later, in 1974. During the great clean-up campaign of the 1970s, Halifax, taking advantage of huge government grants, reportedly spent more on stone-cleaning buildings, the head of population, than any other town in the country. The still blackened spire of square church is visible in the distance immediately left of the town hall spire. This aerial view is one of the country's finest market halls, the Grade Two Star Halifax Borough Market, which was designed by architect brothers John and Joseph Leeming, who also designed Leeds Market. It was opened in July 1896 by the Duke of York, later King George V. The building is in the form of a basilica with a central dome and a 7,000 square yard canopy of glass and wrought iron. At roof level on both the long Southgate and Market Street elevations are terraces of houses once used by market traders and managers and popularly known today as the streets in the sky. The market was stone cleaned in 1973. Not far away, in Rawson Street, is a genuine Georgian stately home, Somerset House, pictured here in 1977. It was built in 1766 for John Royds, wool merchant and banker, by the famous York architect John Carr, and named Royds Manson. It was set in extensive grounds, since swallowed up by the expanding town centre, and contained warehouses as well as living accommodation. The house was originally 17 bays wide, and included a two-storey high salon, above the five-arched arcade, with breathtaking plasterwork by an Italian craftsman named Cortese. The house passed to the Rawson family of bankers, but as the 19th century progressed, the building was divided for multiple uses, which included the local post office. At the end of the century, five bays off the right of the picture were demolished to make way for a splendid new Corinthian-style building for what is now Lloyd's Bank. Note the row of lock-up shops built in the early 20th century which hid the facade of Somerset House behind. And here, and here is Somerset House today. The restoration was the idea of Halifax Civic Trust, which proposed the demolition of the single-storey shops as a prelude to opening up the Georgian mansion. We made a national lottery bid, which was turned down at the second stage, but when the Urban Renaissance programme was announced, 
Halifax was one of the Renaissance towns chosen by the Yorkshire Forward Regional Development Agency, and here was a ready-made project supplied by our trust. Today, the renovated house contains a mixture of businesses, a restaurant and apartments. The centre of this aerial shot shows the uncompromisingly modern headquarters of the former Halifax Building Society, later Halifax PLC, now part of Lloyd's Banking Group. It was built in 1972-73 on the irregular diamond-shaped site of Ramson's Stone Trough Brewery. It replaced the Society's old HQ in Commercial Street and was opened by the Queen in November 1974. The four-storey building is supported above ground by four giant legs at the corners of the diamond, with three more floors underground for storing documents. The building, sometimes called the liner, for the way it appears from afar to float over adjacent rooftops, is both loved and disliked. Those who criticised it thought it was out of scale with the surrounding area. The building was listed at Grade 2 in 2013. Finally, from the finest of our modern buildings to the best of our old. This is Halifax Minster, the parish church of St John the Baptist, and one of the finest churches in the county. It dates from at least 1120, but most of the present church is 15th century, with medieval font cover, 16th century chapels, 17th century pews, and rare Commonwealth windows, a fine series of painted ceiling panels, and a rare figure of a licensed beggar, Old Tristram, of about 1701. Indeed, Halifax can boast top-notch buildings from many major periods, from the medieval minster to the Georgian Peace Hall, the Victorian Town Hall, and the modern Halifax building. And there is so much more about our exceptionally fine town that we haven't had time to tell here. So do come and visit us when you can. You won't be disappointed.